Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. First of all, thank you so much for your appreciation on my last video. So many of you had tried the dishes and sent me your pictures and feedback on my Instagram and email. Really glad to see those and it really means a lot to me. So this video is another iftar party vlog on a day we invited couple of families. Now the speciality of this video is that they are families who don't practice fasting in this Ramadan or to be clear, they are non-Muslims. Just like how few friends invite us to join any celebrations like Onam, Vishu, Diwali, Christmas and such, we also invite friends for iftar and Eid. It brings a beautiful bond between humans. Anyway, let's begin with the video and let me start by telling you the menu first. Here I haven't shown recipes that was shown earlier like the semolina drink or the rice rotis. The families invited were seafood lovers, so most of the dishes were of that variety. At the time of iftar was tuna loaded fries. This is a snack we call chicken pola. For dinner, to go along with rice roti and ghee rice, served prawns curry along with crab roast. Hope you will like it. Keep watching. Let's begin with the dinner recipes this time because those were the ones I prepared in the beginning. Fish curries in fact taste the best if prepared the previous day or the previous night. But I didn't want to serve that way. So I cooked it early in the morning with some preparations the previous night which included roasting the coconut with some spices. The measurements are for 1.5 kg prawns. To a kadai, add 1.5 cup grated coconut, few curry leaves, around 4 to 5 dried red chilies, 2 tablespoons of whole coriander seeds, 1 teaspoon fennel seeds, 1.5 teaspoon whole black peppercorns, a handful of cashews or I can say around 10 to 15 cashews, then goes 3 to 4 tablespoons of coconut oil. You may add more oil while roasting if you think it's less. Slow roast till it's light brown and crispy. While my husband helped me in the roasting, I cleaned the prawns and kept that in the fridge. So here's the roasted coconut which has completely cooled down. The clean prawns, here I've used the head part too as all the flavors lies in it. To marinate the prawns, into a bowl, add 1.5 tablespoon Kashmiri red chilli powder, 1 teaspoon normal red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon garam masala powder, salt, 3 tablespoons coconut oil, add some warm water and make a paste out of it. Loosen it a bit to coat the prawns well in it. Add the prawns, mix and let this marinate for 15 to 20 minutes. Time to fry the prawns. Heat some coconut oil in a frying pan. Fry few curry leaves to flavor the oil. One side needs to be fried for just 1 minute or maximum 1 minute and 30 seconds. And then turn to the other side and again fry. Make sure the flame is medium low and you don't burn the masala. You will need the oil later for the gravy. All the prawns are fried. Keep them aside till you need them. As I said, I'm using the same oil because there's a lot of flavors in it. 
If you get burnt spices, make sure you remove it or strain the oil before adding to a cooking pot. Here I have chopped 10 to 15 shallots. Adding that to the oil first. Keep the flame medium low and saute the shallots till it's soft. Crushing a piece of ginger and around 6 to 7 garlic cloves. Make sure you give a mix to the shallot so that it doesn't burn. Add the crushed ginger and garlic into the pot and saute till the raw smell goes. I add potatoes to chicken or any other meat curry I prepare. I have never added to fish curry but give a try because I know prawns curry gives a minimum guarantee and adding potatoes will only taste better. I took two large potatoes and cut in medium size cubes. Add the potatoes into the pot and mix. There's enough spice in the oil already. I'll add later only if needed. Suddenly I got reminded of putting stories on Instagram and if you're following me over there, you will have already seen this shot and even frying the prawns. Adding just a teaspoon of red chilli powder and quarter teaspoon turmeric powder. Mix well. If you feel the potatoes are sticking to the pot, add some warm water and mix. Cover and cook for a minute. Meanwhile, I chopped 3 small tomatoes. Add the tomatoes and give a good mix. Some salt and mix well. Adding more warm water. Let the tomatoes get soft. Meanwhile, grinding the roasted coconut. Adding warm water to the roasted coconut while grinding will help to get a smooth and creamy paste out of it. Don't forget to check the potatoes in between and give a mix. After 3 to 4 minutes, add the ground coconut paste. Add more warm water to make it a gravy consistency. Let that boil for some time. Keep covered. Once this starts boiling well, time to add the fried prawns. Give a good mix. I had a bigger pot but I wanted to use that for the crab. And I had only this clay pot for the curry. Didn't want to use any steel one. Adding more water as this was thick. The potato is done. I boiled it for a minute and turned off the heat. Time for a tempering. Fry 5 sliced shallots in hot coconut oil. Few curry leaves. And then goes few dried red chilies. Add to the curry and cover immediately to lock the flavor. And the prawns curry is done. Next is crab roast. For that, I took 1.5 kg crabs. You need a ground paste of 7 shallots, 6 garlic cloves, a medium piece ginger, 1 tablespoon fennel seeds, 1 and quarter tablespoon whole black peppercorns, and then grind. Here I used 4 medium sized onion and sliced thinly.
Heat some coconut oil in a large pot that's wide enough to mix a crab. Flavor the oil by frying a handful of curry leaves. Add the ground paste and saute till the raw smell leaves. Make sure flame is low or else it can burn. Time to add sliced onion. Add some salt and saute well till it's soft and translucent. The onion is really soft now. Time to add in 1 1/2 tablespoon Kashmiri red chili powder, 1 teaspoon normal red chili powder, 2 teaspoon coriander powder, 1/2 teaspoon garam masala powder. I think I forgot to add 1/2 teaspoon turmeric powder. Do add that as well. Mix everything really well, adding just a glug of water so that the spices doesn't burn. Time to add 3 medium chopped tomatoes. Mix well and cover. Let the tomatoes go soft. The onion and tomatoes have gone really mushy. Time to add crabs. Before adding them, I lightly hit the legs using my pestle. This becomes easy to have the flesh of the crab without giving you that pain. Add all the crab pieces and mix thoroughly. The water from it oozes out, so do not add any water. Cover and cook on medium low flame for 10 minutes. Crabs get cooked in 15 minutes. If at all you need a curry from this, you can add coconut milk. I am roasting, so not adding any liquid. Add a few curry leaves again. Just for an extra taste, I added half cup grated coconut without crushing or blending. Added as such into the pot. This gives a bit of crunch while eating. Finally, goes in five green chilies that slit. Cook for a minute, and the crab roast is done. I prepared ghee rice and rice rotis towards the end, and the recipes for those are already done earlier. Moving on to the snack preparation, beginning with chicken pola. Very easy to prepare, and this is made with different fillings, sweet or savory. Here I'm making with chicken, and for that I have used 900 grams chicken that's cut in four. Cook that in a pressure cooker, adding salt, crushed black pepper, turmeric powder, and some water. I needed two eggs for this, so boiling it in the cooker itself. Cover and lock the pressure. Cook for one or two whistles. Now, instead of cooking the chicken this way, you may also fry the chicken in oil or air fry it. I wondered if the eggs would break and leak out, but it was perfectly cooking, resting on the chicken pieces. Moving on to the filling, heat some coconut oil in a kadai, crush some black pepper, around quarter teaspoon, add one tablespoon garlic paste and half tablespoon ginger paste. Saute till the raw smell leaves. Then goes one large onion that's chopped to small pieces. Saute well to soft and translucent. While that's cooking, chop one small carrot and one small capsicum. Add the chopped carrot and capsicum to the kadai and cook for two three minutes. Keep on low flame. Shred the chicken with your hands or in a grinder. Do not make it to a paste. To this goes in half tablespoon red chili flakes. Add the shredded chicken.
add some salt. The chicken has salt in it, so add accordingly. Then goes a handful of chopped coriander leaves. Mix all together for 2 minutes on medium flame. And that's done. Now you'll need a batter for this. Basically for the liquid, you need 1 cup milk. As I have the chicken stock left, I made use of it. So I added half cup of the chicken stock and then the rest half was milk. Then goes in 2 eggs, 3 tablespoons oil, 1 cup all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon baking powder, half to 1 teaspoon salt and half teaspoon crushed black pepper. Blend to a batter and keep aside. Then heat a non-stick pan and keep on very low flame. Measure and pour exactly half the batter first. Then goes in the filling on top. The amount of filling I prepared was good enough for two snacks. So I added half the filling now, spread evenly. Then pour the next half of the batter, beginning from the rim. Now this is optional, but for a garnish, I sliced one of the boiled eggs and placed here and there. I didn't have enough time or else you can garnish with sliced carrots, capsicum and chopped coriander leaves to make it look attractive. Cover the lid and place a tawa below so that the snack doesn't burn. Keep on low flame for 5-7 to seven minutes and then flip over to the other side. Do flip to another pan if possible. Use another non-stick pan like this. If you don't have, then flip to a plate and then transfer to the same pan again. The top side will be now the bottom side. Cook on low flame for another 5 minutes and it's done. I prepared the second one the same way. If you want to check if it's ready, use a knife or skewer to poke and see if it comes out clean. Now this was a short clip taken next day. These are the leftovers. I took this video to show you how this looks from the inside. Moving on to the next tuna loaded fries. I had once done chicken loaded fries, we'll share the link above or in the description box. So for the tuna masala, heat some coconut oil, add 1 and a half teaspoon garlic paste and 1 teaspoon ginger paste. Saute well. Then goes in one large onion sliced or chopped. Saute till soft. Meanwhile, chopping one small carrot. Add the carrot and mix. Adding one small capsicum that's chopped to small pieces. Mix and make sure the flame is medium low. After 2 minutes, goes in a teaspoon of red chilli flakes, 1 teaspoon cumin powder, half teaspoon dry basil, half teaspoon dry mint, 1 teaspoon dry parsley, quarter teaspoon oregano and mix. Now all the dry herbs are optional. If you don't have those, you can skip. Then goes a handful of chopped coriander leaves. Give a mix. Add 1 tablespoon of tomato paste and one and a half teaspoon of soy sauce. Then add some salt and quarter teaspoon crushed black pepper. Mix well for two minutes on medium flame and then it's done. Into a bowl, I added three tins of tuna. It becomes to around two cups. To this add the masala and mix really well. Keep that aside. Now you can deep fry the french fries. Here I air fried. This is 750 grams. Air fry it at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. To make the sauce, into a bowl, add 1 cup mayonnaise. To that goes half cup fresh cream. Half to 1 tablespoon red chilli flakes. 1 tablespoon red chilli sauce. 
वन टी स्पून सॉय सॉस टू टेबल स्पून केचप हाफ टी स्पून क्रश ब्लैक पेपर ब्लेंड एवरीथिंग रियली वेल Now you'll be using the sauce in between the French fries and the tuna masala. You may use a spoon to add or drizzle all over, but to make it easier, I used a disposable piping bag. Keep that aside. Now the first batch of French fries is done. Level it evenly in a baking dish. On top, add the tuna masala. Again level it evenly then drizzle the sauce all over Then goes in shredded cheese this is a mix of mozzarella and cheddar cheese you may use just a single one if you want i used both i used mozzarella for the texture and cheddar for the extra cheesy taste the second batch of french fries to be added on top as the name says you need to load the dish with fries Again goes in the sauce Then on top add more cheese. This has to be baked in preheated oven at 220 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. I wanted to show the drink my husband makes every time. Due to lack of time, I couldn't shoot. This is nothing but roux afsa mixed with lemon juice. It's a very refreshing drink. I added few basil seeds to make it look attractive. Time for iftar and they came at the right moment. Dinner was served a bit late as everyone was full from the warm and cold drinks and the snacks. I didn't speak about our guests in fact one among them is Shreyas and family you might have seen them in one of my vlogs they are basically from kerala but settled in mumbai the other is saurav and his wife who are from kolkata both the men are my husband's colleagues i wanted to serve them our authentic dishes and keeping in mind of their love for seafood really happy that they enjoyed the food and i hope you all enjoyed watching this video as well see you soon with another one until then take care Bye bye